A major breakthrough in quantum computing with the first verifiable classical computation only 13,000 times faster than the fastest supercomputer. Anthropic makes a multi-billion dollar deal with Google to buy one million AI chips made by Google and not NVIDIA. Microsoft kills the last non-cloud hosted office and AWS publishes its postmortem on last week's internet crash. Welcome to Hashtag Trending. I'm your host, Jim Love. Let's get into it. For years, every story about quantum computing has come with a disclaimer. It can't yet do anything a normal computer can. Well, that may have just changed. Google says its new Willow quantum chip has achieved what it calls the first verifiable beyond classical computation on quantum hardware. The company's new Quantum Echoes algorithm, published in Nature, ran a molecular modeling task about 13,000 times faster than traditional supercomputers. The experiment modeled simple molecules and validated them against nuclear magnetic resonance data. That's NMR for short. And while it didn't yet exceed accuracy on complex systems, it's still a major proof of concept that quantum computers could soon handle real scientific and perhaps even industrial work. Google describes the method as an echo, a signal sent into the quantum system and then reversed to listen for the echo that comes back. In collaboration with the University of California, Berkeley, the team showed results consistent with traditional chemistry tools. One researcher called it a step toward a quantum scope capable of measuring previously unobservable natural phenomena. Google's blog put it in more colorful terms. They said, imagine you're trying to find a lost ship at the bottom of the ocean. Sonar technology might give you a blurry shape and tell you there's a shipwreck down there. But what if you could not only find the ship, but also read the nameplate on its hull? They go on to say that's the kind of unprecedented precision we've just achieved with our Willow quantum chip. For the team, Google says the next milestone is a long-lived logical qubit moving quantum computing closer to reliable, error-corrected systems. Now, there's a long way to go before this will hit major applications. But Google goes on to say, for those of us working in science and technology, it's the hello world moment we've been waiting for, the most meaningful milestone to date in the quest to make quantum computing a reality. There's a link to the Google blog post in the show notes. Anthropic has signed a multi-billion dollar agreement with Google to expand its use of the company's Tensor Processing Units, or TPUs. These are the custom chips that power Google's own AI models. The deal gives Anthropic access to as many as a million TPUs and more than a gigawatt of compute capacity by 2026. Now, instead of investing directly in Anthropic, Google is selling it cloud and hardware capacity, avoiding the circular investment deals that have drawn such criticism elsewhere. Anthropic will use its new capacity to train larger cloud models, while Google gains a showcase customer for its chip technology. Google's stock moved up about 1% on the announcement. The market clearly saw the deal as a vote of confidence in Google's hardware and a sign that it may finally give NVIDIA some competition in one of tech's most profitable spaces. It also offers Anthropic something crucial, assurance that, as a smaller player, its growth won't be constrained by big rivals demanding preferred access to scarce NVIDIA chips. And it's a setback for Amazon, which had been a major investor and cloud provider for Anthropic, even with its own Tranium and Inferentia AI chips. Microsoft has confirmed the end of its on-premises Office Online server. Support ends December 31st, 2026. This means that organizations still hosting browser-based Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote internally will have to migrate to Microsoft 365 or Desktop Office. Microsoft calls it part of a cloud-first continuously updated model. 
And while it could be seen as Microsoft throwing its weight around, this shutdown likely reflects shrinking demand more than some power play. Still, it comes at an interesting moment. With governments and companies focusing on data sovereignty, especially in Europe, and rising concern about cloud vulnerability, it's a reminder that as cloud adoption accelerates, the availability of a Microsoft suite for local use is no longer there. For some IT leaders, it feels less like the end of software and more like the end of choice. It's another reminder of how little control companies and even countries have once software is available only in the cloud. And finally, Amazon has published its postmortem on the recent AWS outage, and it clears up several rumors. It apparently wasn't caused by human error or staff reductions, but by a software-level race condition in an automated DNS system. A race condition, for those not deep into programming, is when two or more automated operations try to access or change the same resource at the same time, and the result depends on which one finishes first. According to the postmortem, two internal processes tried to update a DNS record for Amazon's DynamoDB service simultaneously, creating an empty entry that effectively erased the address linking thousands of systems to that core database in the U.S. East 1 region. The result was nearly 15 hours of disruption cascading through EC2, IM, and load balancers and affecting everything from airlines to banks to smart home devices and your friendly neighborhood podcaster. AWS said its safeguards kicked in, but just too slowly to stop the chain reaction. The company has since disabled the faulty automation, adding throttling and safety checks, and expanded testing to prevent similar race conditions. Analysts estimate the outage could have cost billions, some are even saying hundreds of billions, in lost transactions and productivity. And while it wasn't a manual mistake, some see it as a design flaw in how automated systems interact at massive scale. Now, no doubt, Amazon has learned some big lessons from this. And we've all learned how a tiny glitch can bring down an entire region. And it makes us wonder how robust the cloud and the internet really is. It's like one client told me after I'd said, I'd learned a lot from mistakes over the years. He said, well, Jim, we'd rather you didn't learn anything while you're working here. And that's our show for today. A quick heads up, in the next week or so, we'll be introducing a few sponsors to the show. Although many of you have been incredibly generous with your support, we're still running at a loss, and that additional revenue will help us invest in what we need to keep improving. Two things I can assure you, ads will be tasteful and non-intrusive, and we'll never change what we do or say. I think I've got more than a decade of proving that in the publishing industry. Your donations still help make this possible. Again, your support is absolutely invaluable, and we thank you for it. And as Steve Jobs always said, one more thing. I'm your host, Jim Love. Have a marvelous Monday. <laughs>